Hello everyone and welcome back to another quick tutorial on Microsoft FS 2020. Today we're going to be doing manual navigation using inside the cockpit using the MFD there and not using the routes here. And the reason you want to do this is it's good practice for the real world. One, two, if you're playing with VATSIM, you're going to want to make your own routes or use suggested routes or something that makes a little more sense than what the game's doing. Um, and then the third reason is you can really fine-tune a route um, and make it really simple for you or quicker than what the game does um, and it's just a really neat way to interact with your flight plan and the plane and uh, we'll show you how to do it now you can go and set it up here I wouldn't recommend doing that at all I'd pick your home home airport and uh, or wherever you want to fly start there where you, wherever you want to start and do it all from inside the cockpit so Today, just for demonstration, I won't even fly the whole route. I'll just show you how to plug it in. Um, we're going to go to my hometown airport here at KCHS. And we're going to fly the TBM today because I find it really easy and simple to use. And the buttons are so easy to press versus the Garmin G1000 system. You have to use the dials and everything. It's a little hard with a mouse. Um, so today we're going to plan this flight. Um, I recommend using Sky Vector. It's free to use. You drop right into the main screen. You can also use Flight Plan Go, and there is an app for that as well that can link up to the game in real time. So maybe a video on that later, but for now we're going to use Sky Vector to make a simple route. So the first thing you want to do here is um, when you load in, it's going to look something like this. It's going to have World VFR. Let's go to my Flight Plan, and we'll just delete that. We'll close it out. So. Start around here, maybe on the World VFR map. I recommend going to the World Low so you can see all these different airways and routes and waypoints that you can follow and plug into your own GPS. Now, to get started, you're going to want to go to your flight plan and enter your departure and destination. Um, we'll just do Miami, for example, here. And you'll see just one direct line from Charleston to Miami. You've got your distance, your in route time depending on the speed you're flying. So in the TBM, we're flying around 300, 330. So you can see there, it'll update, okay, about an hour and a half in a direct line. Um, and you can add fuel burn and altitude and stuff like this, and it can give you some better um, knowledge on your route. I'm just gonna go ahead and pop in the aircraft here, and uh, we'll go from there. So let's go ahead and just change the camera. Let's go inside real quick and we'll set up our flight plan. So to make it really easy on yourself, um, we're gonna do an IFR flight plan. If you wanted to, you can take a look at this. So we're taking off at CHS and there's the Victor One Airway. Um, you can see it here, there are waypoints that you can type in. This is a different departure procedure, which I can show you some of that later. Um, and you can see these waypoints. These diamonds are IFR waypoints. If you wanted to fly VOR to VOR, you can do that by plugging in this frequency here. You can see these frequencies and you plug that into your nav one and you can fly the VOR. Today we're gonna to be using the airways here and these waypoints. Um, so here's a Victor One airway. So to set it up, you can do a couple of things. You can grab this line and change your route. And what you wanna to do to make it easy on yourself is you wanna grab it, wherever you leave it, you can see what your options are. You can see this is the Ruby's waypoint. So we click plan. There we go. Our first waypoint is Ruby's. Right? Now, I don't actually need this one. We'll go down to Tybee. That makes a little more sense. There we go. Tybee. That's right on the this airway here. Our next airway is still the Victor 1. It just changes the angle. And the next good waypoint for that is going to be this one here. Click on that and you want to click on this. Now you can tune into the VOR or the stations. There's going to be a couple options here where you can just plot the exact coordinates, but I recommend using the waypoints because that's a lot easier to type in. Okay, now we're on the Victor 3 route. Let's, let's follow this thing all the way down to this VOR station. In this VOR station, you can type in, you can put in this frequency and stuff. I'd recommend doing the waypoint. It's a little bit easier to follow. Okay, and then let's say we'll continue on that Victor 3. Looks like the next waypoint for that is here. You can also hover it over here and you can see MUDS 
is one of them right here. There's a couple around this area. Um, we can do the MLBSO. We can do a couple of different ones. Let's go there and do MUDs right there in the middle. And then we're going to fly down along this one here. Add that one. And then from there, uh, here's our destination. Um, we will fly along any one we want. Maybe this one here, Victor 159. And we'll follow that one in to Zarna. And then from there, we can activate the ILS approach. Um, and another thing is, let's go ahead and delete this one because it's very close to the airport. We don't actually need that, and I'll show you why here in a minute. So we're going to fly along Victor 195 here. And uh, I'm going to put this on to my other screen, and we are going to go from there. Now, for the startup procedure, I'm going to go over the startup procedure from cold and dark as we are sitting now. If you don't want to see the whole startup, um, I'll put a timestamp in and you can just skip to when I start the flight planning but for now we'll go ahead and do a full start um, usually if I'm on the ground doing a flight plan I would can just do crash bar battery main and, and strobe on and then you have all your batteries you need and electronics are on you can go from here um, but I'll go ahead and do a full startup make it easy and uh, if you want to learn how to do it without overheating your ITT or having a hot start or a hung start I'll show you how to do that so first battery and mains on the generator and turn on your light to let this guy know you're going to start up. Aux boost pump to on, starter up and you can let go, it'll go down on its own. At this point you can start watching the NG rise. At around the second beep you can go ahead and introduce the fuel to low idle. There's that beep, you want to wait for actually 13 on the NG. So we're not right now we're in low idle, we're just going to wait we're really waiting for the NG to get in the green, which is about 51. Uh, the manual says to wait to 53 on the NG before you go to high idle. There's 50. And you can also hit a boost pump, speed up, or go high idle. If you leave it in high idle, you're going to overheat the ITT and have a hot start. So you're going to go up and over that gate in the flight idle. And that is a good start. So boost pump auto fuel selector auto so it will even them out, even out the tanks and then you want this on for your autopilot and your trims without that you cannot run that and then we will go to the nav light turn that on and that is a full start of the engine and then for quick setup turn on your heaters and your separator and lead to auto for your cabin pressure and that's it last thing on the list here is parking brake and we will see that inertial separator amber warning pop up in about 30 seconds, but we're not going to worry about that. So now on to the flight planning. Right now you can see our flight plan has nothing in it except for, should have KCHS maybe. Doesn't even have that. Look at that. So we'll go in here, we'll add our home airport. Okay, and we're going to add our destination. So first thing you want to do is draw that direct line point A to point B, good for K, M, I, and A. That's the amber inertial separator warning. Okay, so that's a direct waypoint. It gives us some distance here, 426 miles, and they even tell you how long it'll take. Uh, since we're not flying yet, it actually won't calculate it. Um, and then you're gonna go to add waypoint. Now, if you wanted to fly a specific departure, you can go to procedures and go departure. Let's say we're going to take off runway 33 and we will do, I'm not familiar with these departures, but we'll just do this one and we'll load it. See what that one looks like. You can see that there. Pretty simple. Um, we actually don't want to take off of 33. Uh, let's go ahead and take off of 15. Is that the one I'm looking for? Nope, we want the one. Which one is it? 21, I believe. That's fine. You can take off a 2-1, and you can pick any transition and load that. You can see it'll plot our first few waypoints in there, and also this one there. So that is going to be our departure. Once we hit this one, 
then we'll start our flight plan. And you can see that loaded in here. You wanna go to add in route waypoint. And our first one, just to show you again, is Tybee. Now, you don't wanna add the Victor One Airways in because you can't just type Victor One. You can see these are thousands of miles away. It doesn't recognize V1 as an airway. So you cannot put in Victor One Airways. You wanna put in the waypoints, so Tybee. T-Y-B-B, -B. and usually these waypoints have some sort of significance to the area. Tybee is actually over Tybee Island, or right next to it. Um, so it's kind of cool, depending on where you go, you can pick up on some of the lingo around the area. Let's go ahead and zoom out. You can see our Tybee. Now unfortunately, Tybee doesn't make sense for us because we already loaded in the transition. That's our departure transition. It's going to follow us all the way down. So it's always good to take a look at that. I can delete this one here, and that's fine. We can remove it, and then Tybee works just fine. And then we want to add an in route waypoint. Our next one here is LLIPS. So we'll put that in there, LLIPS. And you can see, let's go ahead and pull up the VFR map get a little better idea what that looks like. So Tybee, then we're gonna hit that next waypoint midair. Our next one is Debrel. D-E-B-R-L. You can see that one in there. And then from there, we can just fly this all the way in and I'll show you what you want to do for your procedures. Go to, you can do an arrival procedure. I don't know what runway we're going to take. It doesn't really matter. We can do this one. Click load. We can see what that one looks like. You can see that arrival. It's going to bring you at a nice slope and set you up for the runway. Looks like it's going to set us up for some sort of western runway. So we'll go to approach and we'll pick something that's facing the west. Maybe the two six left. We can do this transition and we can load and activate. And we can see what that looks like. Now it overwrote the arrival. It's gonna shoot us all the way over the water, have us do a nice turn, establish on the ILS, and then straight in for the runway. And just like that, you have a full flight plan. The only thing you have to do now is make sure you're on the active nav and it'll follow that plan all the way there. So if you wanted to do special sightseeing in the game, or you wanted to have a very specific route, you can fine tune the exact route you wanna do. Or if you know there's gonna be some weather over an area, you can avoid that. So it's really cool. And you can even do this on the normal flight plan they give you if you do it from the main menu screen. Let's say, uh-oh, I wanted to put something in before the Tybee. You can click on Tybee and you can insert something before it or after it. So if you ever insert something wrong, don't immediately delete it. You can always move things around. If it is a wrong waypoint, you just misspelled it, you can remove it. Um, and you can also go in here at any moment and change. Okay, I don't want to do the ILS for that anymore. Let's do the ILS for nine. And we'll load and activate that one. We'll see what that change. It's going to wrap us all the way around now and load us in. So you don't need to have a single hard set departure or arrival or approach route. If the winds change and you need to adjust, that is totally an option, just a few button clicks away. So I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something. Again, I know this looks complicated from the get-go, but you at any moment you can just drag these and say, well, you know what, I actually wanna go take a look at the Gulf side. And you can go over here and say, okay, we'll add that one in there. So if you're trying to navigate through a mountain pass or do something cool like that, you can always go into VFR map and you can also do these same things. You just gotta look for these waypoints in VOR stations. And if you wanna fly really high up at the 30s and 40,000 feet, you can also go world high, and these are special ones for higher altitudes. So for whatever scenario you're looking for, there's gonna be a route for you, and you can customize it, fine tune it, you can change it mid-flight if you'd like as well. Um, the only interesting thing that I would like to note is that if you want to talk 
to the ATC in game, which is not really good. We can tune to clearance and we can ask them for the instrument flight plan. We can ask them for what we put into the um, GPS and I'll show you, it'll just say, you know, you're cleared as filed, maintain this, you know, and you read it back to them. So it does work um, even if you do it by hand here. Although it might give you trouble, the ATC does have some work to do. Um, so for now, if you really enjoy it, go for it. But I personally don't like the in-game ATC. Um, so I hope you guys learned something. If you guys have any questions at all, please let me know. And if I miss something or need to clarify something, you can also let me know there. And I wanted to share one last thing. So let's say we're going to take this ILS frequency for uh, runway 9. There's no transition. And I need to tune in the ILS frequency. So real quick, you can go on here, and we can go click on KMIA. We can go here and go ILS for 9. You can look at the approach plate. Okay, here you go. The frequency is 110 niner. We're supposed to intercept their altitude at 3,000. That's all fine and dandy. But if you don't have a second screen or you need to find this stuff quick and use your resources in the cockpit, you can go here, waypoints, airport info. We'll select an airport. So we'll go K, MIA, enter. Then you go to your frequencies. Now real quick here, you can see your runways and how long they are and, and all this different info. But frequencies, you can have all your different uh, approach and tower and ground and couple different ones it doesn't tell you what is what exactly which is a bit confusing because there's clearance at least but you can go down here and you can see your airports I'm gonna take the nine left you can click on that frequency which is 110 niner you can activate it here to your active nav and now if I go look at my comms and radios and active nav you got 110 niner and to confirm it's 110 niner here I did have an issue over in San Fran where one of the ILSs did not line up with the, the real world one. So if that doesn't work, make sure you use the one in game. It could be incorrect in real life, um, or it's correct in real life but wrong in the game. But for the sake of playing the game, you got to use the one they give you. So that's a quick way to find it. Um, little extra tip for some knowledge and useful resources in the cockpit. But again, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. And I'll uh, see you guys in the next one.